To get the best results out of your 3D printer, calibration is a must. From e-steps and flow, to temperature and retraction, spending time tuning is essential. One that you've likely heard of is Pressure Advance, or PA, which is used to ensure consistent extrusion by adjusting material pressure with the extruder motor. This is done by starting to push filament earlier for an acceleration and retracting earlier for a deceleration move. We've begun to see some automation of this, but for open source solutions, these systems are still a work in progress. For the most part, this calibration is done with a simple print. I'm tuning my recently built Voron Trident and realized we'd never covered this, so it felt like the perfect chance to show the process. In this video, we'll look at a non-calibrated print, then go through the calibration process and compare once we have our settings dialed in. We'll specifically be looking at this process for Clipper firmware, but it's not too far off from what you can expect with other firmware as well. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before anything else, let's start with our baseline. For this, I disabled pressure advance, sliced a simple cube and orca slicer with default settings, and sent it off to be printed. Looking at the finished part, we can see the effects of not having pressure advance enabled. This part should have sharp corners. It is a cube after all, but that's not the case here. All four corners bulge out and are completely rounded. In this case, we have too much filament being extruded at our corners, but not having PA tuned can also cause too little filament to be extruded. This makes your parts look worse and can ruin the tolerances of functional parts. Now that we know what an untuned part looks like, let's calibrate this. We'll start by using the tower method from Clipper's website since it's slicer agnostic, then I'll show you my preferred method in Orca Slicer. Download the square tower STL file under the pressure advance page of Clipper's documentation. Import it into your slicer, set speeds to a minimum of 100 millimeters per second for walls to emphasize the PA results of the test, and set the infill to 0%. For layer height, it's recommended to go with 75% of your nozzle size, so for a standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, set your layer height to 0.3 and slice the file. Before printing, you need to enter a few G-code commands into the printer's terminal. I'll have these commands on screen as well as linked in the description. The first lowers square corner velocity and acceleration. The second command will vary depending on whether you're running a direct drive or Bowden setup. For direct drive, factor is 0.005, while for Bowden, it is set to 0.020. Once the commands have been entered, print out the sliced tower model. This test works by increasing the PA values for each layer. If you're watching the print and see it go from bulgy corners to sharp corners and then under extruded corners, you can stop the print early. Take a pair of calipers and measure from the base of the printed part to the height where the corners look best. To get the PA value, you'll need to use a simple formula. This formula is pressure advance equals start plus measured height multiplied by factor. In my case, start was zero, the measured height was 4.7, and this is a direct drive setup, so we multiply it by a factor of 0.005, giving us 0.0235. To apply this, open the main printer.cfg file in your web interface. Under the extruder section, add pressure advance, followed by the value you got in the last step, and restart the firmware to apply. Now, whenever you run a print, this value will be applied to it. This sounds great, but there's a problem. Different filament types can have widely varying pressure advance settings. Even different colors of the same type of filament may require slight tweaks based on the pigments used. What I do is use the PA value set in firmware as a better than nothing option. So if I primarily print with say ABS or PLA on my printer, I'll run a test and put that value under the extruder section of the firmware like we did a moment ago. In my experience, having something is better than nothing at all. Jumping over to Orca Slicer, I'm going to show you my favorite method for testing pressure advance, along with how to easily set values for different filaments without having to change the firmware settings each time. From the top toolbar, click on the calibration menu and pressure advance. This opens the calibration tool menu where you have a couple of options. First, select whether your extruder is a direct drive or Bowden to have it update the range of numbers to test. You can manually adjust start, end, and step values, but I've found the defaults to work well enough for me. For testing method, there is PA tower, PA line, and PA pattern. Tower is closest to the default tower we ran earlier and takes the longest. Line prints out a grid of lines run at different PA values with their settings printed next to them. 
Pattern is adapted from Ellis tuning guide and works similarly to line. The pattern method has typically been my favorite to use. We'll go over the pattern method, but I'll leave the documentation for the other methods linked in the description below for anyone interested. Click OK to apply the settings for the test. Orca Slicer will set all of the appropriate slicer settings and you'll see a small square placeholder on the build plate. This is just there to let you move around the location of the test. Slicing the print will show what's going to be printed. All that's left to do is print. This is a super short test that will finish in under 10 minutes. Once the job's finished, I typically don't remove the print until I've picked the setting I'm going to use to prevent any accidental damage to it. We want to focus on the tips of the arrows. The best value will be the one that doesn't have any gaps between the lines, but also doesn't bulge out. We want the sharpest corner possible, and for my test, I felt that 0.02 looked best. In Orca Slicer, next to the active filament, if you click the edit button, it will open the filament settings. From here, we can click to enable pressure advance and set our value of 0.02. I'll save this as voxel PLA since that's the filament I used. Now, whenever I select Voxel PLA and slice a file, it will automatically apply the correct PA settings for my Trident, overriding the default that we set in firmware. As a final test, I sliced the exact same cube that we started with. I didn't change any settings other than the enabled PA value. Comparing it with the original cube, we can really see the differences. The corners look much better and are way less rounded than on our original print. Now that you know the process of tuning this, it can easily be accomplished in no time at all. And that has been Pressure Advance along with how to tune it for Clipper firmware. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have a much better understanding of what the process is and what its purpose is for. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Dana from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.